And we start tonight with a sports story and what a sad tale it is. Northern Ireland and the Republic have beaten last night and out of World Cup contention. The Republic's manager, Giovanni Trapattoni, has resigned while the Northern Ireland manager, Michael O'Neill, sounds dejected and disappointed after his team's woeful performance. Judith Hill reports on the state of play in football. Green and white army fans would do anything for a return to the glory days. Those heady World Cup times of Spain 82. Big name players claiming victories that modern day fans still hanker after. But those days never seemed so far away last night with Northern Ireland's players suffering a humiliating 3-2 defeat at the hands of lowly Luxembourg. Manager Michael O'Neill conceded there were no positives from the game at all. It's prompted commentators to claim the local game has reached a new low. Michael O'Neill obviously is the manager. People will say the buck stops with him. But I feel that um, the players uh, lack leadership on the, on the pitch, they lacked authority and they lacked a desire to win. There was no hunger. I'll tell you where the hunger and desire was. It was with the Luxembourg players. The Republic too languished last night 1-0 away to Austria. And they're now managerless after Giovanni Trapattoni left the job by mutual consent. These parallel tales of Irish footballing woe have sparked debate once again about a combined Irish football team. I remember 10, 20 years ago, to play Luxembourg was a free one. If you wouldn't, didn't win by 10 goals, uh, people thought there was something wrong. So that's how bad the situation is. There needs to be a radical overhaul of soccer on, on both sides of the border here. I don't think the results would be any better if both the Northern Ireland team and the Republic of Ireland sides were to come together. Both countries are going through a very, very difficult period. The loss of Northern Ireland against Luxembourg was just totally unacceptable. And I think some of our more experienced players need to take a long, hard look at themselves. Do they really want to play for their country? There's no doubt it's been a bleak 48 hours for local football. The defeat coming after the sports minister warned she'd pull the funding for the redevelopment of the home of Northern Irish football here, Windsor Park, unless the IFA sorts out what she says are governance issues. And away from the ground, fans we spoke to passionately divided about the way forward. Well, I would say the Republic does have better players, but Northern Ireland do have its couple of stars, but they wouldn't get fair game time. I just don't understand how we can have an All-Ireland team in rugby and nobody really seems to care. Obviously an All-Ireland team uh, would be a bit, you have a better chance, you have a better selection, uh, so a bigger selection would give you better uh, choices. And your man at the helm has now gone. Would you like to see Martin O'Neill in the hot seat? He seems an obvious choice. He doesn't seem to be uh, chomping at the bit to get the job done. And certainly that seemed the case when he spoke to UTV two weeks ago. I haven't uh, I have decided to take a rather um, lazy and rather longer vacation than I uh, had anticipated anyway. But we'll see what develops. You know, I'm. I would be. Uh, I'm sure the call of the football will uh, will grab me and want to get back into it at some stage or another. So, with footballing fortunes for both Irish teams taking a turn for the worse, one quirk of fate is that hopes for better days could end up resting on the shoulders of two men, both called O'Neill. Judith Hill, UTV Live tonight. In the studio, Sunday World sports writer Stephen Looney and in Dublin, David Kelly from the Irish Independent, who's just returned from Vienna with the defeated Republic of Ireland team. David, you were scathing of the Republic in today's article. Trapattoni had to go and go now. And he has. Yeah, well, I think uh, it was inevitable that Giovanni Trapattoni was going to depart sooner rather than later after uh, last night's result. And arguably, he's been on borrowed time since the European Championships really in 2012 when they failed dismally in all three games admittedly against the heavyweights of Europe Spain, Italy and Croatia but there has been no determination since that tournament uh, to change his style to change his autocratic approach in terms of how the team play which is not very well and not very creatively and not with any, any desire to hold possession of the ball and he hasn't improved communication with certain players so there, all, all the systems failures that were there in terms of management style and playing style 
well were, were, were not altered at all. So he has oh. been on borrowed time since then. And, okay. and this campaign proved that was the case. Stephen, Northern Ireland's performance was branded pathetic by Michael O'Neill, so we didn't do much better. There's no other way to dress it up, Paul. It was very, very poor indeed. It was, it was very surprising coming off the back of two excellent performances at home against Russia and Portugal. On the face of it, you look at Michael's record. He hasn't. He's only won one game in his tenure so far. You'd think from. Why a do distance, you think things have been going so badly? I think there's a positive resources available to him. He has a. It's, it's a progress, a, a work in progress. And only in the recent games have we seen what he is trying to do being implemented by the players who are responding to his plans. And that's the positive thing moving forward. Apart from, apart from last night, the players are responding to what he wants to do. David Kelly, uh, O'Neill blamed his players. Squarely, you blame Trapattoni, but not in isolation, the players as well. It opens the debate again as to whether or not there ought to be an all-Ireland football team. Is that a runner? I think it's just a canard that's brought up in, on, on these occasions. I think I don't think it's it's a runner for for many reasons. Most of them political, and I don't mean uh, in, a, in a political sense, but a sporting political sense in terms of merging associations and what it will mean for for clubs who derive a lot of their revenue from from European football, and that would dilute representation there. So I just think that's a non-runner. I mean, the, the the big problem here is okay. International football is the tip of the iceberg, but north and south there are issues in terms of how talent is emerging, the structures of schoolboy football, uh, domestic football and, and, and also as well in terms of where players play in England. They are no longer as Northern Ireland used to be in the 80s and Ireland in the eight, late 80s and 90s under Charlton playing at the highest level clubs with the Eastern Europeans and the African players coming in uh, and in England are suffering themselves domestically in terms of their team. I mean their international right. team aren't really at the races at the moment so that's there's, there's a lot of issues underneath the international team which need to be addressed. Meanwhile Attention now moves to the succession. Mick McCarthy is back in the frame, but Martin O'Neill's name is being mentioned up there too. Yes, and again, I mean, a new manager will paper over over cracks. Martin O'Neill um, will not be appointed soon. I mean, he's the favourite. I think they will leave the appointment for a long time because the FEI have no money to pay a manager. Uh, Martin O'Neill is currently unemployed, and I would be a bit worried that that's the only reason that he is the favourite because he's unemployed. I have respect for what he has done at certain clubs before. He's a good motivator. Uh, he will not he will not play brilliantly attractive brand of, brand of football but he will be a, a good man manager and he will get the best out of the available resources which was okay. the chief chief uh, criticism of Trapattoni that he did not get the best out of the resources. Stephen O'Neill is the bookie's favourite, do you think he's the man? I think it's pretty much a match made in heaven I think it's probably likely that it's going to happen Martin's a very capable manager I think he's gone as far as he can in club football he's not going to get back into the top four teams in the Premiership where he would, would, would like to be I think he's always wanted to crack an international manager at this stage in his career and his life I think it's, it's a real runner I think it'll happen Meanwhile, that's it for Northern Ireland as far as this World Cup is concerned but attention now moves to Euro 2016 more players or more teams in that championship what do you think? The thing you want is a favourable draw, to be honest. It, it, it wasn't a glamour draw this time around, but it was very, very difficult with Russia and Portugal in the same group. There are signs of progress, uh, although last night you'd think that you're, making, you're taking two steps forward and three steps back. But the positive thing, as I say, is that the, the players are buying into what Michael is trying to do. And there are signs that maybe the next campaign will be better than this one. It couldn't be much worse. <laughs> Fingers crossed. David Kelly in Dublin and Stephen Looney here in Belfast. Thank Pleasure. you both. Now, we welcome your views on the state of football north and south of the border. To tell us what you think, just log on to our website, u.tv slash news.